In medical school culture, there's a huge stigma when it comes to talking about any kinds of setbacks. And because of that, I wanted to talk about my own personal experiences with failure in medical school. Exactly a year ago from when this video is gonna be uploaded, I formally sent in a request to take a leave of absence from medical school. I just submitted my request um, to take a leave of absence um, from medical school for my first year and repeat the year in July, two months from now. <sighs> I was deflated, I was ashamed, I was embarrassed, I was anxious about what this could mean for my future. But even more than that, I was really disappointed in myself and my performance that year. I had a really difficult time adjusting to medical school and all of the expectations that it comes with. I was still in a little bit of a COVID funk, I haven't been in school in a few years before I matriculated, and because of that, I just struggled to get in the groove of things. I ended up failing the very first block of medical school by a single point, and that one point failure wasn't really the biggest setback, it was my attitude towards it, and I'll talk about that a little bit later. I didn't really have much time to process the failure because the next block began immediately. I tried different study methods out throughout the semester and felt like I was in survival mode the entire time. So I actually ended up failing the last block of that semester. So I failed the very first block and I failed the very last block of the fall semester. And that put me in the red zone when it comes to being a student. For my school, you are given a chance to take a remediation exam and if you pass it on your transcript, it'll just say failed but remediated successfully. So I had a chance to remediate here. So in my school, you're only allowed to remediate two courses for the entire year. So if you fail a third course, you're gonna have to remediate the entire year. And you know, honestly, that does make perfect sense. So I studied after winter break and successfully remediated that first block that I failed. I actually crushed the remediation exam. And then throughout the next semester, I did pretty good. The only problem was it was at a cost of my physical and mental health because I gave so much up because I was so scared to fail again. So I was doing really good throughout the semester. I actually got through neuro, which in my school is notoriously the hardest block of the entire year. But after I passed neuro, that's when I made the final mistake that sealed my fate. So the final neuro written exam and final practical exam were on a Friday. And after I finished those set of exams, I was so burnt out and tired. It all kind of came crashing down all at once that I let my myself get complacent. We had another exam the following Monday, so just three days later, but it's our clinical medicine exam. And for clinical medicine throughout the entire year so far, the exams are pretty easy. We scored very high, the class averages are very high, I did well in them. So I thought, you know, maybe I don't have to study, maybe I can just take this weekend off. I got complacent. And to everyone's surprise, the last PCM exam, the last principle of clinical medicine exam, was actually pretty hard. Like the average tanked compared to all the other exams that we took throughout the year. And most people still studied, so you know, they didn't do as well, but they were still good enough to pass. Me, on the other hand, I didn't study at all. Had I studied, maybe I would have gotten a passing grade regardless and gave myself a buffer but because of my lack of you know focus on just that last weekend I let myself slip and I earned my third failure so you guys obviously know what happened next I submitted my leave of absence request and here I am repeating the first year again now a quick disclaimer here I am NOT putting blame on anyone else for my shortcomings I failed the first block I failed the second block. I let myself get burnt out. I didn't have sustainable habits and I let it catch up to me. And then I failed the third block. It is nobody else's fault but mine. These are not excuses that I'm making. There's a very, very big difference between having an external locus of control and just pointing out and identifying the reasons why you failed, right? You wanna have an internal locus of control and understand what you could have done to fix the situation. But in order to do that, you need to figure out what actions and decisions brought you there in the first place. I remember searching up failure in medical school when I was going through this process and there really weren't many videos on this topic and I get it the culture of medical school and probably medicine just in general there's this pressure to always portray yourself as perfect you're super hardworking you're super diligent you don't burn out there's this there's this really big external pressure to just give that image off and yes I make study videos I make productivity videos I make workout videos and sometimes I think to myself am I adding to this toxic culture by making these videos. I mean, I'm just trying to help, but am I perpetuating this toxicity? So don't let the fancy edits and motivational talks on social media fool you guys, all right? Medical school is stressful and medical school is very, very hard. It doesn't matter what anyone says. It doesn't matter about those influencers that seem like their lives are perfect. They have it all together. They're pumping a research article every single month. It doesn't matter what perception they're trying to build, right? You don't know their reality. Understand that medical school is very hard. And it's also really difficult to talk about failure in medical medical school because on top of the endless exams, practicals, labs, and all these mandatory things, research, extracurriculars, all that stuff, 
There's also this feeling that we're under the scrutiny of the future program directors and the future residency programs that we're going to apply to. And because of that, we feel the need to try to portray ourselves as perfect. Will this make me competitive? Should I study less to do more research? Should I do better in school and give up aspects of my social life? It's a constant game of tug of war. And I say all of that just to say this. If you're failing a year of medical school and have to repeat the year, if you're failing an important exam or anything like that, you are not the first person to fail and you will not be the last, but you will get through it and you will be a badass physician at the end of it. You just have to keep going. And if you decide that medicine isn't for you and you realize that this isn't what you wanna pursue, this experience doesn't define you. Don't let these things define you. Your grades don't define you. Your repeating a year doesn't define you. Your failures in and out of medical school don't define you. Although it's not the traditional experience or obviously the ideal experience, it is your experience and you just have to own it, right? There wouldn't be such a big stigma about failure in medical school if people just talked about it more. And obviously this applies to every aspect of life, not just medicine, but it's definitely prevalent in our system. In the realm of medical school and medicine in general, everyone's so vocal about how difficult the path is, right? How hard it is and how rigorous it is to become a physician, but in the same breath, they also are so quick to put each other down and just eat their own. It doesn't really make sense to me. And this leads me to the first and probably the most important lesson that I've learned from this experience, and that is, there's more to life than your career. This is such a simple and obvious statement, but that feeling like your life is over and all of your hard work was wasted is a common shared experience that a lot of students that have experienced failure, especially remediating the year, have all felt, myself included. And I don't wanna invalidate where your feelings are coming from because there's a lot of pressure to match into a specialty that you're actually going to enjoy. There's a lot of money that's on the line. There's a lot of time that you've already invested so far on your journey. But just know that you know your story isn't over, your life isn't over, and the journey is far from over. If you're currently on a leave of absence or about to take one, I implore you to just step back from anything academic for a while and just ask yourself, who are you outside of medicine? What do you want out of your career? What are your priorities? Fitness has been a huge part of my life since I was 16, but that came to an abrupt halt once COVID and the pandemic hit and all the gyms shut down. And then after that, I just couldn't really get back to the swing of things. I started putting on a lot more weight and I just didn't feel good physically. And when I started medical school, I came in with the wrong mentality and the wrong idea that there just wouldn't be enough time to work out. And I just went to the gym very passively, didn't follow a program, and it just wasn't very consistent. When I was on a leave of absence though, I finally hopped back onto a consistent program started going more consistently and that's when I realized my grave mistake was just not prioritizing fitness as a cornerstone of my physical health or my mental health. I realized just how important going to the gym was for me. After spending some time putting back on muscle and putting back on my strength, I've been leaning out and have been making great progress. Honestly, I feel better than I ever have. And this YouTube channel was something that I've wanted to start ever since I graduated high school. Literally when I was 18 and didn't even go to college yet, I wanted to start this YouTube channel. And I know it's a little bit of a meme where the repeat medical student is the one that starts posting on YouTube and posting on social media. But for me, I just had a lot of time to self-reflect. And because of that, I realized this was a goal of mine for a long time and I just didn't want to keep pushing it back years and years and years. If you're someone who's waiting to start back up on medical school, the best thing you can do for yourself is start building those good habits now. Make it a habit to go to the gym. Start learning how to track your own nutrition. Start picking up those hobbies that you've always wanted to do but never got around to. On top of these things, this is a great opportunity to do some soul searching. Really look into yourself and figure out what you want your life to look like. And I know some of you guys might be thinking, Kenny, I literally just failed out of school. Is the solution really to focus on things that aren't related to school? For me, it was. I obviously had to revisit my study strategies, revisited my approach to medical school, made the proper adjustments, and this pass, I'm doing much, much better. And guess what? I'm actually studying a lot less than I was last year. In my videos, I always preach the importance of balance, the importance of having hobbies, the importance of tracking your nutrition, making sure you get to bed on time and get proper amount of sleep. And that's not just advice that I'm making up because it sounds good. That's literally advice that I'm living and it improved my own life. This does lead me to my next point though, which is being honest with yourself. I mentioned earlier that my grave mistake wasn't failing the first block by one point. It was my attitude towards failing by one point. Let me explain what I meant here. You don't want to put yourself in a situation where you're feeling salty about failing a block by one point. In the very beginning of the block, you saw the syllabus, you knew what the expectations were for passing. 
I failed to meet those expectations. I failed. It doesn't matter if it was by one point or if it was by 20 points. I knew what the standard was. I didn't meet the standard. The reason that I struggled academically and ultimately had to repeat the year was because I had a really hard time adapting to medical school and getting adjusted to this kind of climate, this fast paced learning. And on top of that, when I tried to adapt to it, I didn't have sustainable habits. And because of that, I burned out. Now these aren't excuses, they're reasons. Now during your time off, you need to be honest with yourself. What actions or inactions led to your failure? You're only gonna be able to work on your shortcomings if you're able to actually identify them. And in order to identify them, you need to be real with yourself. You need to look yourself in the mirror and realize you messed up and figure out what exactly you messed up on. And I bet most of you guys already know exactly where you fell short, right? Now let's talk about dealing with the judgment of others. This is another source of anxiety for repeating students, and trust me, I get it. It can be kind of embarrassing to face your former classmates, face your professors, have your new classmates find out that you're repeating. I get it, trust me. I remember when I first submitted my leave of absence thinking, man, I made a whole post about my white coat ceremony. I made a whole post about how excited I was to get accepted into medical school. So many people congratulated me. So many people told me they believed in me and I let them all down. How am I gonna face them all now? It sounds a bit silly to hear and say that out loud now, but those were my feelings and my thoughts at the time. It was embarrassing. You can keep your status as a repeat student confidential if you want. That is 100% your decision to make. At the end of the day, it is nobody else's business but yours. I have classmates that did the same thing and that was their decision to make. There's no shame in that. Me personally, I made no effort to really hide it. I just kind of told everybody, hey guys, I'm doing this first year over again. What's up, my name's Kenny. Having spent a few months prior to starting again, feeling anxious about facing everybody, made me realize that if people just talked about it more, I probably wouldn't really be feeling this way. So I decided that I was gonna talk about it more. And especially after starting this YouTube channel and posting on social media, my whole perspective and mentality just shifted. I genuinely just don't care what people think anymore if I don't know them personally. People just don't have that much access into my psyche anymore. Now another part of this equation that is a very legitimate concern is how program directors and residency programs are going to view you. As medical students, these are the people that decide our fates, so their opinion kinda does matter in a way. Now during the months that I had to self-reflect on me taking a leave of absence repeating the year, I thought about the situation. I knew that a program director was eventually going to ask me, what happened, why did you have to remediate your first year of medical school? And I wanted to genuinely tell them that that was the best thing that could have happened to me because I learned so much. Not because it sounds nice, not because I'm romanticizing the experience, but because I wanted it to be true. We've all heard stories of people that have undergone adversity and overcame it, and it's always a great story. And I just thought, why can't that be me? Why can't I make the most out of this circumstance and get something out of it and you know find all the lessons that I can out of this whole experience? Now, don't get me wrong here, guys, right? This situation sucks. It's a shitty situation no matter how you look at it, and romanticizing it is not what I'm trying to do here i'm not trying to be dismissive of your guys's experiences because i'm sure you guys probably feel horrible but guess what guys i'm not just talking about it i lived through it too i've been there yes you need to process your emotions yes right you deserve to have the time to really absorb what just happened to you take your time to process it and then you can move forward but being pessimistic the entire year is also not going to do anything for you admittedly though I also don't have any interest in any hyper competitive specialties and because of the nature of said hyper competitive specialties, the feeling's probably mutual. If you're someone who is interested in a hyper competitive specialty, you already know I'm not a dream killer, right? I believe that everyone should always go for what they want in life. With that being said though, it is important to get a realistic gauge on just how big of an uphill battle it's going to be and then you can decide if that's something that you want to tread. What's more important than even worrying how residency programs are going to look at you is actually becoming a good medical student. I mean, you're literally repeating the year, right? It's great to look ahead, right? It's good to plan ahead, but what's going to suit you the best, what's going to give you the best return on your attention is going to be how to become a good student to ensure this never happens again. Einstein once said, insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. If you've done your soul searching, if you've developed good habits, started going to the gym, took care of yourself, you're in a good spot now, the elephant in the room still remains. You failed a year of medical school, you need to make some kind of changes academically. Before we get into that though, I want to address the irony in the situation because it's kind of obvious. Yes, I am a student who failed the first year of medical school, had to repeat, and now I'm about to give academic advice to other students who might have failed the first year of medical school, second year of medical school, or whatever. Fair enough. If you're someone who's gonna take my advice moving forward with a grain of salt, 
Fair enough. In fact, I actually recommend that you take anyone's advice with a grain of salt moving forward. It's just good practice. Now, I can't speak on your guys' perception on who you think is credible to give academic advice, right? That's not really my job, but I wanted to say this. I can't talk about your guys' perceptions. I can only talk about my own experiences. It is not an opinion. It is a fact that I was once a bad medical student so bad that I had to repeat the first year of medical school. And now I normally score well above all my class averages on every exam. I know what pitfalls I fell into and I'm just sharing my experience so you guys can hopefully avoid them as well. And of course, I've had doubts filling my head saying, maybe I'm only doing good this time around because I've seen all this material before. But then I thought about it. If I already knew the material, I probably wouldn't have failed in the first place, let alone it helping me a year later, right? So I gave myself a little pat on the back there. I think I did well this semester. I don't care, I'ma say it. You guys need to follow this exact process, right? You need to analyze your own study strategies. You need to filter through the advice that everyone's giving you. And the most important step, you have to find out what works for you. Reddit user, future Harvard neurosurgeon 2009, might have had a lot of success not watching any of his school's lectures and just blasting Anki cards 16 hours a day. But that doesn't mean you will. Try different methods out, see what works for you, and then stick to your guns. Resource overload and strategy overload is a real thing in medical school. Don't expect yourself to do good in the classes you did good in last year. And don't expect yourself to do bad and struggle in the classes you did bad in and struggle again, right? Don't expect to just go to labs and know everything and not pay attention to your preceptors or instructors. You should keep an open mind and just experience the year over again as if it's your first time seeing it. Your first runaround was just a preview, now this is the real thing. You are now a first, second, third year medical student all over again. It doesn't matter if it's your second pass, you're a first, second, third year medical student all over again. Treat yourself as such. My second pass through the first year of medical school, I actually picked up on a lot of things that I didn't the first time around, so I'm actually really glad I got that exposure. Don't assume you know more than all of your classmates and don't act like a know-it-all, right? They're your new cohort and you guys are all in it together now. The next thing I want to talk about is actually the most important thing, and that's you. It's not a secret that medical school is not an optimal environment when it comes to your mental health. There's a lot of stress involved. There's a lot of anxiety involved. There's a lack of agency that makes you feel like you're out of control of your own life. If you're watching this video and you're a student who's dealing with failure currently, you've probably already been dealing with all these negative things. You already know firsthand just how bad it can be. Before you consider what lifestyle modifications you're going to make, what study strategies you're going to adopt, how you're going to approach the next new year, how you're going to make friends in the cohort, the first thing you need to do is make sure that you're mentally ready for it. If you're having a hard time dealing with the situation, if you're having a hard time processing all that it comes with, consider talking to a therapist. Use your resources and take care of your well-being first. None of this matters. Medical school doesn't matter. Becoming a physician doesn't matter. Your career doesn't matter if you lose yourself along the way right? So treat yourself with kindness. It's not weak because you're struggling with this. It's not weak because you're using resources and asking for help. It's not. Now let's talk about the light at the end of the tunnel. It's hard to talk about this now because I'm still wrapping up my repeat year and I still have a long journey to go. But from where I am now, I can confidently tell you guys that there is a light at the end of the tunnel. It does exist. If I had the chance to do things over again and prevent myself from repeating the year and prevent myself from having to go through this entire thing, I honestly wouldn't do it. I'd let it happen. Now, would my residency application be better? Obviously, right? Would I have more doors open for me when it comes to specialties? Duh. But there were a lot of lessons I learned throughout this process that's honestly bigger than medical school, bigger than my career, right? I had to take a long, hard look at myself, look at where I was going in life, and decide that I didn't actually like where it was headed and make those adjustments. Since then, I took ownership of all of my goals and where my life was headed. I'm doing better academically. I'm doing better with my fitness goals, my personal goals. I'm finally making a YouTube channel and it's finally growing thanks to your guys' support. And honestly, I'm just in the best mental space that I've been in a long, long time. I've also been able to make Make a lot of good friends in my new class and I honestly wasn't really expecting that benefit and if you guys are a little anxious about integrating yourself into your new class I highly encourage it don't isolate yourself meet your new classmates so if you're someone who's in limbo right now and just waiting to repeat the year just know that it will get better but in order for it to get better you need to put in the deliberate work you have to reflect on yourself reflect on your year and decide that you want to do it differently you want to be better it sucks now and it's gonna be hard but it's gonna be worth it and you're going to be a physician in the end and believe me i know how isolating it can feel to be a repeating student the anxiety that it comes with and even though i told you guys that you guys should integrate into your new class be open with your classmates be friends with them sometimes it can be hard to open up 
if you guys need someone to talk to, if you guys need some advice, some insight on my own personal experiences, you guys are more than welcome to get in contact with me. Just leave a comment, send me a message on YouTube, follow me on Instagram and leave me a DM. I will get back to you. If you guys made it this far in the video, thank you guys so much for your support. I greatly appreciate it. I'd love to hear your thoughts on failure, how you deal with failure, and some things that you've overcame. So go ahead and leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next video.